All right, so today I want to feed some ball python hatchlings and I want to bring you along for the ride and give you some tips and tricks on how you can successfully feed some of your ball python hatchlings. And I would say out of all the age groups, the hatchlings are probably the most difficult to feed. And really what it comes down to is you need to know the appropriate food for the appropriate stage of development of the ball python. So essentially when it first hatches out of the egg, pretty much the only thing that it's going to eat is a live mouse hopper and I've tried all different kinds of things I've tried live rats I've tried frozen thought pretty much the only thing we'll eat hands down for the first I'd say at least four or five meals is gonna be small live mice and then from from there what you really want to do is you want to transition over to a frozen thawed mouse and then after a few of those you want to transition over to a frozen thawed rat and I would say there's there's a couple things you really want to watch out for the, the first thing really to, to really successfully feed these snakes is you want to realize that sometimes they can kind of backslide a little bit so for example if you feed multiple live mouse hoppers and then you transition over to like a frozen thawed mouse then you think all right it's made the transition and then you try to feed frozen thawed mouse after mouse after mouse and it keeps refusing sometimes what you have to do is you actually have to backtrack and go back to the live mice for a couple more meals and then try to make the transition over and it's kind of the same thing with the rats is you pretty much have to transition at the right time and sometimes you'll do a rat and then they'll take it and then they will refuse rats and sometimes you have to go back to mice and probably I would say the big things that you really have to watch out for is ball pythons can get stuck on uh, like a frozen thawed mouse as a matter of fact I have some adult ball pythons that refuse everything except frozen thawed mice and let me tell you you want to get them from mice over to rats as soon as possible because you definitely don't want an adult ball python stuck on mice it is really extremely frustrating and difficult to get the weight on them just feeding them mice and another thing you want to watch out for is I've seen a lot of these breeders where they go, oh yeah, yeah, feeding these hatchlings is real easy and they'll kind of go right down the row and they'll throw in live mice or live rats and feed only live until they get to like sub-adult or adults. And let me tell you, I actually have a few ball pythons that are stuck on live. They will absolutely refuse everything except for live rats or live mice. And it's, it's, it's funny because I'll go in there and I'll offer, you know, like a frozen thawed rat again and again and again week after week month after month and they just refuse and refuse and refuse and then I throw a live rat in there and as soon as it hits the bottom of the tub they'll take that rat it's like they will definitely only eat for for whatever reason only take live rats and you definitely really want to stay away from that especially if you're a breeder and you're thinking about selling some of these snakes there's a lot of people that are really uncomfortable feeding live and it's it's you know I don't really like feeding live because it's it, you know you can make your rodents suffer while if, if the snake doesn't get a really good grip on it and it's really dangerous as far as the rodent being able to hurt the snake there's some danger there as well so you really want to keep them off of live as much as possible and you really want to keep them off of mice as soon as possible you want to get them over to like a fresh kill or a frozen thawed rat so what I'm going to do is I want to show you kind of my setup here as far as so I pulled a bunch of rodents out of the freezer. I'm going to set them up here and I want to show you how I prepare them to feed some of these hatchlings. All right, so here's my setup. Essentially what I do is I just go in the freezer and I pull out some rodents for feeding day. And what I'm gonna do today is a lot of these snakes are almost ready to sell. I think about 40 of them should be on rats. So I actually raised my own rats in the off season. I euthanized with CO2 and then I put them in the freezer for the hatchling season because you really feed a lot more during the hatchling season. And as soon as all these hatchlings are gone, I won't actually have to feed these anymore. And then I have another 15 here. I have 40, 40 rats and then another 15 mice. And I'll, probably what I'll do is I'll start feeding the rats first and if they don't eat the rats I'll try 
the frozen thawed mouse, and then if they don't eat the mice, I'll probably follow up with a live mouse hopper. And then I actually have uh, some of these jumbo retired breeder mice that I buy from rodentpro.com for my mouser adult ball pythons. So essentially what I do, I know a lot of people kind of just soak these in water and you know this, they soak them in hot water and feed them that way. I do not like rodents in water. I think it's absolutely disgusting. What I like to do is I actually roll out some of this paper towel and I thaw them out at room temperature. Put them here and I spread them all out and I just let them sit for about two hours and then I'll come back and put them under a heat lamp and then feed them after they warm up. All right, so to start, essentially what I do is I put down paper towel and then I spread them all out, make sure they're not touching each other because otherwise it kind of slows down the thawing process. And I just let them warm up at room temperature for about two hours and then I'll just, I'll just leave them here in the snake room and then I'll come back. Nobody really comes down here. It's pretty much my own private snake room. Nobody will actually come in and see all these laying around. I'd say if you have like cats or anything like that, you probably don't want to do it this way. But for me, I don't have any cats. No one's going to come down here. I'll just let this sit for about two hours and then I'll come back. All right, so these have been thawed out for about two hours, and then what, essentially what I do after the, they're completely thawed out is I put them under this heat lamp, and the heat lamp is like kind of like the heat lamps that you use for chickens, like baby chicks, and then I put it underneath my camera tripod. I just kind of made this up. It works fantastic, and essentially what you do is you just tuck it under the three legs of the, of the tripod, and then you just you know, wait until they are nice and toasty warm, and then what I do is every time I feed one I pick it up with my hand and make sure it is nice and toasty warm before I feed it to a hatchling and let me tell you that is the trick for getting hatchlings to eat all right, so from here, essentially what I do is I go through and I kind of, these have been sitting under the lamp for a while. I use a gloved hand, I put gloves on, and then I just kind of go through and feel them. And I find a nice, toasty one. The ones under the middle will be the hottest, and you want to make sure that they are definitely warm through the whole rodent. And then I use a tongs, essentially what I do is I use a tongs. And then I'll come over here to my hatchlings. And I'll show you this guy, he almost always eats. So let me grab this. Now they might be a little bit freaked out from the light and the camera and everything. We'll see if these guys will actually eat. I'm sure this bamboo will probably take one here. Maybe. Maybe, maybe. Yep. <laughs> I'll take it. And that is really all there is to it. And then what I do is if they eat a rodent, I'll move the clip to the right and I'll go through and essentially I just move them all to the right. Then I kind of know which ones have eaten, which ones haven't eaten. And then if they haven't eaten, essentially what I'll do is I'll move it to the left and then I'll, I'll follow up with the, the mice. And if they don't eat the mice, sometimes, I mean, the, the, the hatchlings this big, you know, if they don't eat, I'll actually skip a week because these are really big, hefty hatchlings. But on the smaller hatchlings, I'll actually follow up with a live mouse hopper if they're really small. All right, so it is time for the question of the day. And the man 1477 asks, do you have a ball python that you consider a pet that you would never get rid of? And that is a very good question. Pretty much out of all my ball pythons, there's only one that I consider part of the family, and that is the ball python around my neck. This is Bobby, my bamboo ball python. The first bamboo I ever bought. I bred him through my collection several times, produced a lot of bamboo babies from this guy right here, and now he's pretty much replaced himself. I took him out of the breeding program, and he's just kind of a pet just kind of hangs out with me here in my reptile room every day so that is pretty much it thanks for watching and i will see you next time all right so <laughs> ah. all right bobby all right bobby all right bobby <sighs> All right, so today I want to feed some hatchling ball pythons and I want to bring you along for the ride. And let me tell you, when it comes to feeding hatchlings, it's probably the most difficult age group out of any of the ball pythons. <laughs> 
All right, so today I wanna to show you how to successfully feed your ball python hatchlings. Probably one of the toughest things when it comes to ball pythons. And as a matter of fact, I've seen a lot of times after reptile shows, a lot of the pet stores will say, a lot of people come in and say, hey, I just bought this brand new ball python hatchling and the hatchling refuses to eat. And let me tell you, that is probably one of the biggest frustrations of breeding ball pythons. So essentially when you first start breeding ball pythons and they hatch out of the egg, the very first thing is all right so it is time for the question of the day and the man 1477 asks 